350 mile wide hurricane called Mitch is zeroing in on the small Central American nation of Honduras. Torrents of rain fall at a rate of four inches per hour. But when the downpour subsides, the water keeps coming. Rivers originating in the Honduran mountains now surge with the excess, cascading into the already flooded valleys. The rushing rivers rise above their banks, severely damaging every major bridge and roadway in the country. This hurricane will go down in the record books as the fourth largest of the century and test the Honduran people like never before. Entire regions of the country are underwater. People swim where there used to be roads. More than three million Hondurans have been forced from their homes, and rising floodwaters threaten to overtake those who sought refuge on their roofs. To rescue the trapped victims, Honduran and U.S. militaries launch a collaborative rescue effort named Joint Task Force Bravo. U.S. Army pilot Robert Flaw is one of the first to fly over the devastated country. When we showed up on the uh, location out there, actually the entire valley was totally flooded. Uh, we were really shocked at the amount of uh, flooding and, and devastation that we saw up there. It's kind of hard to express uh, exactly what you feel other than you're kind of in total disbelief. Chief Pilot Flaw sees two men who have been trapped on their roof for days. Army paramedic Vincent Conyers is lowered down on a winch. As Pilot Flaw maintains a steady position, the team is able to lift the drenched and starving hurricane victims from their roof. When you fly in, and you can just see it on their faces, they haven't had any food or water in days, and uh, they've just lost everything that they own. The helicopter rescues continue day and night, but there simply aren't enough helicopters to search for everyone, and 8,000 people are still missing. Civilians all over the country realize that they too must join the effort to save lives. Johnny Sakasi, a television station manager, is one of those who takes up the call. With the rains now falling only intermittently, Johnny is able to grab a few supplies and head out with his cameraman on a fishing boat. I saw people asking for help, and then I decided to help the people over there. As Johnny enters the first town, the rain begins again. This man tells Johnny he has been swimming for hours in search of help. His gratitude for being rescued is enormous, and so Johnny continues to pick up more people. And they motivate me to get help more and more and more, and I think all day save people. The power of the flowing flood water is deceptive. Johnny sees a young boy trying to cross over a section of flooded road, but the current is too swift, and he is swept away. The young boy is saved, but when Johnny comes upon two men stranded near another waterfall, he knows that their situation is critical. Johnny ties an inner tube to a rope and throws it into the water. The men grab the inner tube, and Johnny and his helpers use all their strength to pull them to safety. The first on board is Pastor Ricardo Villatoro, who became trapped by the current when he went looking for his missing parents. You can lose your life in an instant, and I saw myself looking into the face of death, where only God's hand could help me. The pastor tells Johnny that just beyond the waterfall, two other men have been stranded for days in what is left of their home. And so Johnny lets out the rope and guides the inner tube toward the two flood victims. The first man dives into the water and swims as fast as he can toward the inner tube. But the rope is not long enough to reach the victims, and the current is too strong for the man to swim against. The people start swimming and swimming to try to get the rope, and they never can. Terrified that he will be swept away, the man turns back. But he is desperate to be rescued and tries again. This time he makes it to the tube, and with what strength he has left, holds on as the rescuers begin to pull him in. But now he must keep his grip on the inner tube as he is pulled against the incredible current. 
As he approaches the waterfall, the poor man is dragged underwater. The scariest moment was when he got pulled underwater. He just disappeared. He was there for a long time, and we couldn't see his body at all. Weak beyond words, the man makes it to the boat, but he has no strength left to climb in. The rescuers pull him on board. Johnny and the pastor now turn their attention to the second man. By the end of the day, they have saved more than 25 lives. But what had caused this terrible disaster? Hurricane Mitch was born off the coast of Colombia in October of 1998. Steering currents drove it northwest towards Central America. Unfortunately, these currents, or rivers of air, died down when the hurricane reached Honduras. This caused Mitch to stall over the small country for several days and unload an unprecedented amount of rainwater. As a result of Hurricane Mitch, over 6,000 people lost their lives. And over 12,000 people were injured in Honduras alone. During the course of the hurricane's ruinous odyssey, rescuers from the Honduran and American armies and civilians like Johnny Sakasi and Pastor Villatoro risked their lives to help friends and strangers through this terrible ordeal. I'm learning in this kind of tragedy, no matter if you are rich or poor, Everybody the same, and then we we'll have to be together. Hurricane Mitch tested the courage and determination of everyone who lived through it. And even though the storm has passed, the struggle to recover from this disaster will continue for many years to come. <laughs>